Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Let the drama kick, let the drama kick die. Baltimore City, Charm City, a city known for its rich history and plagued by its new reputation, a reputation for violence, drugs, and crime. Baltimore, the city that helped develop so many great leaders, leaders who helped African Americans get our emancipation and receive our civil rights. Baltimore, the city that helped give birth to jazz. In communities all over the city, there are children. Children have a right to receive so much more. Communities like Easterwood, where children reside and play in the same place where Douglas spoke and Holiday sang. Because of their legacy and their love for a city that made them who they are, the brothers of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Paul Omega Chapter, have stepped up to change the state of the youth in the Easterwood community in Baltimore City by founding Omega Baltimore, an organization that has taken over the operation of the Easterwood Recreation Center, which was closed to the community in 2008, now serves Baltimore City Youth. November 7th, providing hot meals and snacks to kids through an at-risk after-school program. We've had the Recreation Center open. It's a public service which is totally volunteer, and it is truly a joy to gain the kids' trust. First, we didn't have their trust. Now we know all of their names. You, now you're starting to know the families, the parents are starting to know who you are, and um, really it's building a relationship with the kids in this community. <laughs> vision of moving the chapter to and indeed what we're doing now is really part of a continuum. What you're seeing now at Easterwood is not the end product. It's merely kind of a point on the continuum. A point that we are quite happy about now because the you know getting those seven acres and the building um, the, the recreation center on those seven acres um, has really um, been a game changer. It's no secret of the disconnect between African, African American males and our communities. And many people won't talk about it, but I'll talk about it. Um, the significance of having um, you know, dozens of, you know, maybe hundreds of African-American males, professional males who are college uh, educated uh, directly in a community that is, is plagued by many systemic issues uh, that affect our urban cities. Uh, these young men in this area, and young women, have the chance of looking up and aspiring to be things that they may not see on a daily basis. Uh, and that's what this center will allow, and that's what this center will afford. So, yeah. 
stand on the shoulders of giants because you can go for decades back and we can trace the history of the chapter engaged with the community, the children, and the schools. Particularly, uh, recreation programs often were offshoots of school programs. I think about the James Mosier League, which still exists, or the Northwood League, which still exists out of recreational programs that were tied into schools. And the schools and communities worked very closely with the recreation centers to uh, give that continuance of involvement with young people as they left the school and went to the recreation centers in the evening or Saturday programs. So there's always been, um, I think, a clear understanding that that need was important and needed to be fostered and taken care of. Going back to my childhood, I spent a lot of time at Easterwood because I grew up in that neighborhood um, not far from there on Lanville Street. So I've watched uh, that, uh, that whole program go and I can remember when it was very, very vibrant. Uh, across the street uh, from uh, Easterwood was Carver Vocational Technical High School. And so so there's, there's always been that kind of connection. I worked for the South Baltimore Playground for the Baltimore City Department of Recreation Park. So very excited about the possibilities around what's going on uh, with regard to um, the Omega Baltimore and the Recreation Center program that's being developed uh, uh, through the city. Our communities are in danger. Day to day, we lose our tradition, our heritage, and our history. Carter G. Woodson, the father of black history, had the vision almost 100 years ago that if we did not take the appropriate actions, we would be in this current societal state. A man who in 1915 founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life, and in 1916, established a journal of Negro history. He shared this vision with like-minded individuals, members of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. The connection between Brother Woodson's vision and the tenacious steadfast support for the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity helped develop what we now know as Black History Month. His legacy reminds us what we must do to develop our youth today to prepare them for tomorrow. Connected with the necessity that Carter G. Wilson put before us that we must, whether it's a week or a month or better stated 365, we must place the context both biblically and academically. It must begin with who you are. It must begin with who you are. And once you know who you are, then you can ascribe to your purpose in life. But it's an affirmation of, of, of who you are in God. That when God made man, and God made specifically the African American man, he made a precious jewel. So, so that the Willie Lynchism, the Willie Lynchism that has been used to uh, cause our people to hate each other and to hate the color of their skin, that Willie Lynchism has uh, to it a kryptonite, which is the truth. And it's that truth that biblically we are taught that makes us free. And that kryptonite is what we learn both in the Bible what we learn academically from a historical perspective, and what we honor uh, as one of the starters, Carter G. Woodson taught us to honor our heritage. So I think as educators, it's very important for us to understand the past in order to prepare our students for the present and also for the future. 
um, with it being Black History Month and just thinking about the impact that Maryland has had in our past with the Mason-Dixon line where when the slaves were traveling from the south to the north and they knew once they got to Maryland they were almost at their freedom. It's just great and it's just tremendous. And especially when we're going into classrooms right now and we're having conversations with our students about like, what does Black History Month mean to you? Who are some of the great black leaders who we can look up to? And most of our students don't even know about Carter G. Woodson. Um, it's definitely unfortunate. But I feel like as an educator, it's up to us to instill that in our students at a young age to make sure they know their past. Because if they're gonna be the next Barack Obama's, the next Dr. Martin Luther King's, the next Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali's, they have to know the struggles that came before. I leave people with that. Be so reminded of Martin and Malcolm, yet so inspired to sketch your own path. So like, you must know about your history. You must know where you come from in order to know where you can go, what you can accomplish. Like, when you know that you're part of an ancestry that has done this and accomplished that, um, has produced these works of art, you too can do that. And so we have post-traumatic slave disorder. Like when we look outside today and we see, what we see are people who don't even want to let go of master's hand, right? And that's what we have. We see that in our communities right now, but that's because we also don't know where we come from or there's so many people that don't know where they come from and what they can accomplish and what they can do. So it's very important uh, that we infuse it into the curriculum so that makes it culturally relevant to the students. It's primarily in that children and youth, especially African American children and youth, don't know who they are or where they come from, mentally and spiritually. They have a poor awareness of self-concept. I'm not talking about self-esteem, but self-concept self-image, what they think of themselves, self-role, how they communicate with others, self-idea of what they want to be in the future. I feel that uh, many children and youth don't have a sense of racial or family history. Um, and more programs and efforts need to be made to make children and youth aware of their race and to help them learn their family history. Huh? Are you talking to Luther King? We already got that. Um. Um. I know. Um. How many you know? Frederick. What is your name? What you learn? Make sure, no, 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 not that. Just the facts. Mm -hmm. We know that we're providing youth with positive African American role models and teaching them their heritage, we can change their reality. But we cannot do this alone. Support these children, support this revolution. Love your answer to the question. Who is this?